Hi everyone, I am Gina Filbert Ortega for Genealogy Bank. Now, we love Genealogy Bank for historical newspapers, right? But do you ever take the time to really explore the website and see all that it has to offer? What tools are on the website that can help automate your search? Well, sometimes we're in such a hurry to uh, find those great newspaper articles, we forget to really explore the website. So what I want to do is I want to look at one feature in my folder. Have you ever looked at my folder or do you use my folder? Well, it's a wonderful feature. It can help automate your uh, searches. It can help kind of bookmark where you've been. And it just is a really nice tool to help you with your uh, historical newspaper searches. So let's go to the website. Let me show you my folder and how to save your searches. So now we're at the Genealogy Bank homepage, and I want to show you a few things before we continue on. Now, my folder is up here to the left of my name on my account. And uh, when I hover my mouse over my folder, a drop down menu comes down and it shows me three options. Now, we are going to explore each of these options in separate videos. For today, we're going to talk about saved searches. So I can go to save searches, click on that, and go to that page. But before I do that, I want to show you something else. Notice that under the uh, search engine, we have recent activity. And one of the choices is saved searches. So I can access my saved searches right there on the home page. And that might be helpful as I go to search to see what I searched uh, just recently. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go up to my folder. I'm going to go to Save Searches, and this is what the Save Searches page looks like. Now, it's basically a bunch of boxes with your saved search terms because that's what we're saving. We're saving the search terms that you used uh, in your session that you saved. So, for example, uh, if we look down here, here is Mary Ann McNeil. There were a 88 hits and I searched it on November 22nd. Now one thing to keep in mind is that it will tell you when you save it when you searched it and then if you click on search again it will come up with a new date. So this is not going to retain all the dates that you saved this. You're going to have to do that in a research log. But it tells me that I can search again so I can click on there and search again. I can delete the search. Maybe it's not that important to me anymore. Or I can get an email alert every time new content with her name is added to Genealogy Bank. Now that helps me automate my search. And, you know, it helps me to do more with my searches and save some time. Now, let's talk about this a little bit. The email alert, and I'm going to show you you can set that up either in your saved searches or when you save the search itself and we'll take a look at that. So let's go ahead and let's go search again. Okay, so here's my results from my search. It's exactly the search that I saved and you can see over here on the top right it says search is saved. All right. So why would I want to do this? Well, there can be all kinds of reasons. Some of them might be personal or some might be just how your, re your research project. So for example, uh, you know, it's exciting to find great stuff on Genealogy Bank and then to do a lot of research and put it away and, you know, have life happen and then forget what you searched. So it's almost like setting a bookmark. And so that can be a really useful to tool for you. It also can help because we should be using name variations. And so it can help you track that. What have I used and what have I not used in my searches? You might be searching something that maybe it's a name that's a really common name and you find results that you're not sure are your ancestors. So you don't really want to document them in a research log. Maybe you don't want to put them in your tree. You can use the save searches and kind of put a hold on it and wait till later you are sure it's your person or it's not. And then if it's not, you can delete it. So there's all kinds of reasons to do this. Now, 
let's see how it works when we just do a search. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the search engine. And we'll just do a search. Okay, so here's my search, and I could filter it down, but we're just going to use this for our example. Do you see how up here it says Save Alert? So if I click on that, I can save my search, and that's going to go into my folder, Saved Searches. Or I can save the search and set up the email alert. So I can do it right now, or I can do it later in my folder. So whichever works best for you. So that's how we save the search. Now, keep in mind, this isn't just for historical newspapers. Let me uh, remember up here is the collections of genealogy banks. So let me go to government publications. So this is showing Lars Peterson in government publications. I can save my search there as well. So it's not just for the newspapers. So always look to the top right for Save My Search and at the very top for My Folder. I don't know about you, but it's really exciting to find stuff on Genealogy Bank and find those newspaper articles with our ancestors' names. And sometimes you might go hours and find all kinds of great stuff. And then you put it away you go live life and you come back in a few weeks and you totally forget what you've already looked for. That's the beauty of saved searches in my folder. It allows you to save searches whether you get interrupted or whether you've had a really great search session. You can go back to it and see what have I searched before. The other thing you can do is you can set up alerts so that it automates it for you. And that way you get emails when the system finds additional new articles that match your search terms. Take a look at my folder, take a look at Save Searches, and see how it can help you with your genealogy research. I hope that's helpful, and I'll see you again next time.